Hello there, Max here, and welcome to my review of SFS 1.5. In this video I will go over everything that has changed since the last version, perform a basic speed test, and talk about blueprint and planet editing, before sharing my personal experience and feedback. Let's start with the menu. First of all, you should notice that this update has its own name. But before we click the play button, let's take a look at what else the menu has to offer and see what has changed since 1.4. The Tutorials menu now only features links to video tutorials. Text tutorials from 1.4 are no longer available in 1.5. As of now, we know that proper tutorials will be added in 1.52. The Community tab gives you direct access to the official SFS YouTube, Reddit and Discord. A fine addition to the settings are the new audio sliders and the ability to access all settings from anywhere in the app. The patch notes report visible and invisible changes, while the roadmap shows plans for the future of the game. This adds a nice level of transparency, where you know what the devs are working on. The credits have been expanded with three new names for me to busher. Jordi van der Molen, programmer, Chris Christo, programmer, and Davy Vask, composer. No, I have not missed the huge expansion section. These are the parts, the skins, and the planet's expansion, and the expansion bundle, which includes all of the expansions and the sandbox mode with sheets as a bonus, while being 12% cheaper compared to buying every expansion individually. After pressing the play button, you can select one out of four slots, each of which is its own world and can have its own solar system. Your blueprints, however, can be accessed from any save. On every save you can see when was the last time you played it and your total playtime on that save. You can, just like in 1.4, resume or build a new rocket, but now you can resume even when there is no rockets if you have played the save before. You can also rename or delete saves. But before we get into the new building menu, let's take a look at the new and or changed parts. You can now see all of the new textures compared. You can also see that there is a new big landing leg new aerodynamic cones and resized fairings. Fuel tanks, aerodynamic cones and fuselages and all fairings now have access to a huge variety of skins compared to the 1.4 parts, where the skin variety was different for each part. The menus, too, are now even cleaner than before, and blur the background. Now to the changes. Keep in mind that the electrical system has been removed, it will be reworked in a later update. Therefore, all parts that needed electricity before just work now without any electricity. The RCS thruster's mass has increased to 0.05. Its thrust has doubled, and its efficiency has decreased. The Grasshopper engine has been renamed to Colibri engine, its thrust has increased, and so has its efficiency. The Broadsword has been renamed to the Valiant engine. Its mass was reduced by half ton, and its efficiency was reduced by a marginal amount. The Hawk engine has also lost some weight while gaining a little thrust and efficiency. The Frontier engine is lighter and more efficient now, but has less thrust. The Titan engine is heavier and less efficient now, but has significantly increased thrust. I did not confirm this, but it also feels like the fuel consumption of this one has increased by a lot. The Ion engine originally was not in 1.5, but has been re-added in a bug fix update and it's more OP than ever. Mass has decreased, just like thrust, but not only does it no longer need electricity, but the efficiency has increased from crazy to ridiculous. Both parachutes are lighter now. All separators are now heavier and their separation force is only a fraction of what it once was, except the side separator, which somehow has gotten lighter. The weight of fairings now depends on their size. They now also have a funny word in the description. Encapsulate. The aerodynamic fuselages are 40 or 80% lighter depending on the part. The docking ports were tweaked in a weird way. 
the small port has a lower mass and separation force than it should. The solar panel's weight now depends on its area when opened instead of its area when closed. It's more realistic that way. The wheels are now lighter and don't need electricity. The structural pieces have gained weight. The probe weighs more and has more rotation force. The capsule is unchanged. Of course, the visual effects of the flames and the looks of the solar panels, as well as the whole user interface, have been reworked too. They are now in the dark mode and blur the background. There is a new building screen in update 1.5. You can still drag each part individually, if you like playing Dark Souls. Or, you can use the new select system and the copy tool, and if you are a perfectionist like me, you're gonna find yourself using the symmetry mode a lot. The update trailer advertised a quicker startup of the game. This doesn't seem to be the case for me, or it was referring to something different. I also couldn't help but notice that the 1.4 save files, while being converted automatically, actually have not changed. When I opened the files, they seemed to be the same files as before. To me it seems like 1.5 doesn't convert the actual files, but it can support the old ones. After I deleted all of my 1.4 blueprints, the game has gone from needing a few seconds to load blueprints to needing a few milliseconds. So this is something you should definitely do if you don't mind deleting all of your 1.4 saves. But for someone like me, playing the game is not enough. I, like many other players, enjoy tinkering with the game's files to push the boundaries and see just how great this game can be. For example, I am the original creator of the day-night cycle for SFS 1.4, which a lot of players enjoyed and some even modified to make it even better. This is why BP and Planet Editing needs to be accessible, simple and usable. And these are my criteria to determine if 1.4 or 1.5 is more customizable to casual players. In 1.4, the BP editing was 20% accessible. That is because it was only accessible on Android, you needed a separate app, and it was not encouraged. It was 60% simple, because most things were clear, however the part rotation was difficult. It was 65% usable, because it was mostly foolproof, but mess-ups were difficult to save. In 1.5, BP editing was 85% accessible. It's mostly in the app, but some features are exclusive to file editing. It's 95% simple, because if you use it in the app, you can't mess anything up. But even if you decide to edit the files instead of just doing it in the game, it's difficult to mess up. And it is 80% usable, because you can only mess up when editing files, and not in-game. Planet editing in 1.4 was 35% accessible. It was only Android, you needed a separate app, but it was advertised. It was 50% simple. Some things were not obvious. And it was 20% usable because it was easy to mess up and it required a lot of dedication and time. In 1.5, Planet Editing is 20% accessible. It's still only Android, it's still only in a separate app, but it is no longer advertised. It is 70% simple because it's much better, but it's still not perfect. There are still some things that are unclear. As of 11th of June 2020, custom solar systems are either unavailable or I am too dumb to use them, which is much more probable. This is why I give it, in terms of usability, a 0%. Now to my personal opinion. I love the new background with these gorgeous shooting stars. The music is beautiful and sometimes made me feel like I was watching a movie. Giving players access to the patch notes and roadmap is a smart move that ensures players that the devs are working hard. It's nice that the expansions are now split apart and the bundle includes a bonus at a lower price, but I feel like the expansions should have their own menu, as they are the only thing that doesn't have one and they interrupt the otherwise clean interface. Obviously, the world with separate solar systems are a great addition and I can't emphasize how useful that is. 
When building I found that the select system was very intuitive and selecting parts did not hinder me from doing anything else and it felt natural to tap the background in order to deselect everything. Still, it would be helpful if we could select an area by, for example, holding the background and then dragging a rectangle over the parts that we want to select. The part catalog was easy to navigate, except for big engines, which are only located in the engines tab and no longer in the tabs for big fuel tanks like they used to be, but that shouldn't be a problem for new players. Also, the selected parts sometimes have rough edges, but that really is the only imperfection in this beautiful new UI which even blurs the background. Have I said that it blurs their background yet? Well, I have, but I still love it. <laughs> Overall, if someone would start playing SFS on 1.5 and then play 1.4, the older version would get 3 stars. Accounting for all the new improvements, I would like to add 1.5 shooting stars to that score. I absolutely must subtract half a star from the perfect score because of the fact that the game already stops counting playing time after 68.05 years. That's not nice. Also bugs. <laughs>